Welcome to KetoMealsAndRecipes.com. Today I'm following through on the promise I made quite a few months ago, that is, to make a yeasted keto bread. This versatile hot dog bun and roll recipe is not only a keto and gluten-free recipe, but it's vegan as well. I hope you watched the entire video because there's actually a few bonuses to this video. I'm actually going to use the same basic recipe to make two versions of this recipe. And depending which one you're interested in, there is a timestamp so you can skip ahead or go back to follow the instructions for that particular version. And lastly, the link for the written recipe that can be translated into other languages is available in the description below, so go down there and check it out. And if you keep watching, at the end of this video I will be doing my own comparison of the yeasted and the quick bread version of this recipe and provide you as clear of an explanation of the taste and texture of each. Before starting my recipe, I have a question for my viewers. I have noticed that many YouTubers report net carbs only, and they may seem really low, even when the total carbs are quite high and they don't report soluble and insoluble fiber, which reacts differently in your body. What I would like to know is, would you like me to start a series, maybe once a month or so, where I take your questions and concerns and I do a bit of research and make a video out of it. If you are interested in such information, please leave me a question or comment or something you need clarified and post it in the description below. Now, the macronutrient ratio for the hot dog buns and rolls, the yeast version, is 1.6 to 1 with 23.6 grams of total carbs, 12.6 grams of soluble fiber, 5.3 grams of insoluble fiber resulting in 5.8 grams of net carbs per very generous bun, which by the way is 157 grams of raw dough. In many other recipes that would be the equivalent of three buns. For the yeasted version of this keto vegan bread roll, start by first blooming your yeast. In a small bowl pour in the warm water and add the dry yeast and stir. By the way, the water should be about 120 to 130 degrees Fahrenheit or 50 to 55 degrees Celsius. And then after stirring, set your bowl aside for about 20 to 30 minutes to give the yeast time to bloom. And at the end of that time, check for small yeast bubbles on the surface of the water. It kind of looks like a soft velvety bloom. Whenever I'm baking, I find it best to always sift my dry ingredients to ensure there are no lumps and for best results. I do this by placing a sieve over a mixing bowl and to that sieve I add all of my dry ingredients. The fine almond flour, the coconut flour, lupin flour and the salt. And you aerate by just stirring this together so that all the dry ingredients pass through the sieve. By the way, for the best taste and texture, if you want more of a classic bread taste, I combine a variety of grains and nut flours because the combination of tastes really work well together and this combination creates more of a bread taste. And I really do like the taste of the balance of almond, coconut and lupin flour, but note that I don't put the whole psyllium husk in the sieve with the rest of the dry ingredients because it's too coarse. Instead, I prefer to toss the whole psyllium husk into the bowl when I'm all done sifting my other ingredients. Now in a separate measuring cup or small bowl, I pour in my boiling water to which I add my oil. Give it a quick stir and then pour it into the bowl with the dry ingredients. Then stir immediately until all the dry ingredients have soaked up the water. At this point, leave your dough to rest for about five minutes. That is so that it can cool down. You don't want the dough to be too hot as it may deactivate or damage the bloomed yeast. Okay, now it's time to pour the bloomed yeast water into the bowl. Then stir or fold until well combined, but don't overwork or compress your dough. Be very gentle as you do this. You don't want to compress the dough mixture because that would make the final bread much denser and tougher. Okay, all my ingredients have been added, so I'm going to place a tea towel over my bowl and put it in a warm spot by my window for about one hour. This will help my yeasted dough to rise. 
and now it's time to shape the buns. Today I'm going to make them into hot dog buns, but you can make them into hamburger buns or even a loaf of bread. This is a very versatile recipe. To make the hot dog buns, divide the dough into four equal large sections and each section is about 156 grams or 5.5 ounces. Without pressing hard and compressing the dough, gently shape into elongated hot dog buns or if you want, into rounded shapes for hamburger buns. To even out the hot dog bun shape, I'm going to gently roll the dough with my fingers like this. This will help to lengthen my buns. If you're wondering, each bun is about 6 inches long or 15.5 centimeters. After rolling, place each roll onto a baking sheet or use a bread baking pan like this. If you're interested in this pan, check out the link in the description below. Because this bread has become a favorite, I've made several batches. You can leave the surface of the buns plain or sprinkle them with sesame seeds or a combination of sesame seed and poppy seeds, which of course is always up to you. Now that all four of my buns are made, I'm going to transfer the bread into the middle position of my preheated 370 degree Fahrenheit or 188 degree Celsius oven. For this yeasted bread version, I'm going to bake them for 40 minutes, no longer. When the baking time is done, remove them from the oven and let the buns cool completely before using. This is all there is to this yeasted version. While my yeasted buns were resting and cooling, I began to make the quick bread or no yeast version. The macronutrient for the hot dog buns and rolls quick bread version is 1.8 to 1 with 23 grams of total carbs, 11.5 grams of soluble fiber, 5.3 grams of insoluble fiber resulting in 6.3 grams of net carbs the directions and ingredients for these two buns are very similar, but there are a few differences. So here are the differences. To make the non-yeasted version, like the first version, place a sieve over a medium mixing bowl to which you add all your dry ingredients, the fine almond flour, coconut flour, and lupin flour. This time you're also going to add gluten-free baking powder and salt. Then whisk and aerate until all the ingredients pass through. Toss in your psyllium husk as you did before and whisk to combine. Now, in your measuring cup or small bowl, add your boiling water, add the oil, and this time you're also adding apple cider vinegar. The apple cider vinegar will activate the baking powder in this recipe. Pour the liquids into your dry ingredient bowl and stir immediately. Make sure that all of your dry ingredients are well integrated with the wet ingredients. Then let your dough rest for five minutes. First, it'll cool down so that you can handle it it will also give time for the dry ingredients to absorb all the water. Like before, divide the dough into four equal sections of about 156 grams or 5.5 ounces. That's if you're making the hot dogs. Without compressing the dough, gently shape into elongated hot dog buns as we did before. Place each roll onto a baking sheet and transfer to the middle position of your preheated oven, this time the temperature should be 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 177 degrees Celsius. Note the temperature is a bit lower for this quick bread version. And set the baking time for 70 minutes. When your bread rolls are done, remove them from the oven and let them cool completely. So here are my two versions side by side. What do you think? Now for my comparison test. The first thing I noticed is that when I picked up each of the rolls, I noticed that the quick bread was heavier and seemed denser than the yeasted rolls. And I'm going to cut one of each in half to show you the interior. Starting with the quick bread recipe, this has a nice crust that is like a crust of a hot dog bun, nice and soft. This recipe has smaller air bubbles and as I already mentioned, is firmer and has a denser texture. The inside of the bread is nice and moist. So far so good, I'm quite pleased with this quick bread version. Now for the yeasted version. It too has a nice soft bun-like crust and not hard like a baguette. After cutting, I notice that the center has much larger air bubbles and the texture is more springy. Overall, the yeasted bread seems softer, more like a soft hot dog bun or hamburger bun than a denser style bread. 
Now for the best part, to taste. As I expected, the quick bread has a denser texture and has more of a sourdough taste and density. And that's because we're using baking powder and vinegar, which gives it more of an acidic sourdough taste. I have to say, I quite like it. Now for the yeasted bread. It's softer and the texture is lighter, more like a 60% whole wheat bread. This yeasted version maintains a light, slightly sweeter yeasty taste, kind of like a glutinous bread would have. Not exactly the same, but pretty close. The quick bread is great for more savory sandwiches. And if you want some ideas, please check out my falafel bread sandwich recipes, which has six sandwich ideas. The yeasted bread is perfect for a peanut butter and jelly sandwich or with something a little bit sweeter like sautéed red and yellow bell peppers or other sautéed sweet vegetables. I hope that you'll find both versions of my keto buns and bread recipe useful. If you do like my recipe, please give it a thumbs up and share it with a friend. Sharing my videos is the best compliment you can give me. For those of you who are new to my channel, a very warm welcome. I would be very grateful if you would subscribe, turn on the notification bell, scroll down to all so that you'll be notified when I post my next video, which is about once a week. I really love the community we have formed, so please do leave me a comment or a request. I do answer all of your correspondence. Most of all, I hope you come back when I post my next recipe. Until then, have a wonderful day. Cheers.